Welcome to another edition of the Civ Battle Royale. My name is Dawkins and this is episode 15, Pyromania and Firefighters. New and very interesting conflicts blaze across the cylinder as we get further into the Renaissance. Starting on turn 216, let's get right into this. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Civilization Battle Royale X, or Seabricks. This is user Yago2003, Zimbabwe supporter, Brazil hater, former boar supporter, serial rioter, and first time narrator. I would also like to give a shout out to user Greg9's prediction contest where you can earn fake internet points by predicting which civs will go up and down in the rankings in this week's part. Contact him on Discord or Reddit for more information. Here we see some Simpsons OC made by user Staunch Boat Mormon, nice username by the way, which showcases the high IQ strategies both Benin and the Comugs are using, and they seem to be working very well as neither of them have been eliminated yet. So, I guess that works, just like this rock. It keeps tigers away. Here we see user Varia's hand-drawn map, which was posted just a single hour after last week's part went up, which is ridiculous. It lets us notice things we may have missed in the part, such as the fact that Tonga time comes ever closer with multiple new cities settled by them. This week's second map is user Thy Reformer's subjectively pretty diagram of objectively relevant wars, which I had to look at an embarrassingly high amount of times, and by the next week this map is going to look very different as some interesting things happen in this part. Oh look, Uruguay number one again. Very surprising. I thought Tonga would beat them this time. I guess not. Anyway, let's get on with the part. Bowmen and Silly City Names Starting off this week's part, we get a clear shot of the Sami-Prussia War, where it is very clear that Sami have the clear advantage on the battlefield, as Stettin has been shot down to the deep red, and the Sami have two melee units within range, and another two turns away. There also seems to be units with a case of the missing icon, as Knight to the left, of Stettin and an Embark unit by Bergen have no icon whatsoever, which is a bit strange. The Minoan boat keeps noting down the happenings in the Baltic Sea, which will be sent to the endless maze where their leader still resides. Sweltering Green Hell Here we see the uruguay Quicoro conflict, still not much happening in it because of Quicoro's unique ability. And because Uruguay want to attack their entire civilization at once with a row of well-balanced units. They hold on to Seku, but the city could still flip. That Haitian bowman must have taken a wrong turn or 50 somewhere, or maybe they like looking at powerful militaries. The Battle of the Strange Yellow Civs It seems that the Moors somehow managed to take the final resting place of Libya, Misrata, but I doubt they will hold it for very long as the Songhai land army is big, scary, and close. However, if they do lose it, Misrata will most likely flip multiple times with all those boats they have everywhere. War Settlers, Seabricks Edition It seems that the Vikings have learned from their Mark II counterparts and have decided to attack Scotland using just settlers, and the Manx, not wanting to be outdone, have decided to counterattack with three more. Surprisingly, it isn't working as Edinburgh has fully healed for the first time in centuries, but at least the Vikings seem like they may capture Colby if they start using their navy better. Lumberjacks and Trebuchets The situation worsens for Geronimo as the Iroquois send an ungodly amount of tomahawk warriors towards the Apache city of Chechende. It should fall if Hiawatha acts even remotely competent. Poverty Point watches in fear, fearing the day when it is their head on the chopping block. Out of the fire, into the Tlacopan. Unsurprisingly, the Aztecs do not recapture Colhuacan, and their embarked army seems to have disintegrated. And it seems the Apache are tired of flipping Tlacopan and have set it on fire, and it seems destined to burn short of a miracle. Revenge of Manoa Stettin has fallen and is being raised, proving that the Sami are still suffering from unhappiness problems, 
and it seems that the Minoan boat that at first saved Prussia will be their downfall, as it is stopping the Prussian boats from melee attacking the city, leaving those two knights as the only hope for recapture. No more distractions. It seems that now the Vikings will be able to focus on the Scotland War as they have finally made peace with the Manx after a surprisingly irrelevant war. They have lots of pieces of an army around Scotland, but if they can keep doing what they have been doing for the past few episodes, then Edinburgh will fall around part 20. The Last Libyan As the final Libyan trireme gets bombarded by Songhai composite bowmen, Songhai recaptures Misrata with a pikeman. The Moorish navy seems to have moved somewhere else to get more useful cities, so Askia may keep the city for a bit longer. Now or never. New Zealand has made peace with Australia, letting them keep Adelaide and Cayenne Bayan. The Murray seem to be running out of time to capture Sydney. They would be able to get it next turn if they focus on killing that knight and the composite bowman, so that the zone of control doesn't slow down the pikemen, but that seems highly unlikely to me. Come on, Murray, do it! Eventually going to die, probably. The Kamugs have a pretty big military advantage over the Avanks here on the border. If they were to declare war on them one day, it seems pretty clear who would be the winner. There is somehow a Seljuk scout there as well, probably thinking about where he is going to live after their civilization burns down. Aztecs in Ashes Tlacopan has burnt down, and Kualaokan won't last much longer, but it seems that the Apache have run out of steam, which is honestly a good thing, as they should focus on defending against Hiawatha and leave the poor Aztecs alone. Proven wrong again. Seems that I was wrong, and the Minoan boat moved out of the way, letting Prussia capture Stettin again, which means we will probably see it flip a few more times before one side gets to keep it, or burn it down. Third time's the charm. It seems the Goths are not satisfied with just taking the Golden Horde capital and have shot Bulgar down to the black. However, their nearest melee unit is at least four turns away and could still die. And if they do die, then it'd be significantly longer before the city falls. The Goths really need to make more melee units if they want to stay relevant, as they only have four on this slide. Chop, chop, chop. Or not. The Lumberjacks seem to be perfectly content just standing next to the city menacingly without taking it. But seriously, Hiawatha, just take the goddamn city. It's not that difficult. Just walk into it and burn it down. Zimbabwean Island Colonies Apparently Zimbabwe have astronomy as they have settled Cape Verde with Mapella, and Benin instantly send a single trireme to attack it. Honestly, it's going to fall. Zimbabwe is clearly screwed as this invasion force is too strong. The Fast and the Murrayus. It's happening. The Murray are about to take Sydney, and it would take a colossal screw-up not to capture it now. But after that, they should seriously peace out as Gosford seems to be on death's door. So if Sydney isn't captured with peace being made immediately after, the Murray are actually screwed. Peacekeeping Madagascarians. As the peacekeepers and the Uruguayan trireme watch in horror, the Chin send an impressive attack of a single warrior towards the city of Kowloon. The Tongu also look to have astronomy now, which means they're going to be expanding. Glorious Nazca Navy. As we admire the Glorious Nazca Navy, we can see that not even water can stop everyone's favorite eldritch abominations, as more and more of their units have learnt to become one with the water. It seems that the Nazca are lacking in land units a little bit, and New Zealand have settled yet another island right next door. New Zealand's Colonies Maratha has completed the Leaning Tower of Pisa, which I guess is a pretty great wonder, and we also get a good shot of New Zealand's one-tile island cities. Those islands may be where they die in the far, far future, and if they do, then remember that I called it here. So long, and thanks for all the cities. The Murray have flipped Sydney, but now their luck has run out, and a big, scary Australian army is knocking on the doors of Gosford, which will most likely fall. The Murray need to sue for peace right now if they don't want to have to hang out with Minos and you. Impenetrable Defenses 
It seems that Parthia has mastered the art of defense after having found a copy of How to Fight Wars Good deep inside of a cave. It said, If thou want to not be attacked by thy enemies, make thy enemy thy friend by letting them live in your land. It seems to be working. Also, how is there an Indian Gellius inside the city? Strong Venetian Core. We get a good shot of the Venetian Corps, which seems to have a full naval carpet and a pretty good land army too. All they need to do is actually make it go somewhere, such as the Ottomans or even Nubia. Or, you know, keep turtling. That works so well. What goes up must come down. Gosford has fallen to the Australians and the Murray Corps has three cities left. Doesn't look very well defended. It is astounding watching someone everyone believed in collapse so hard. The Murray need a peace deal, like, right now. Empty Pink Lands The Sulu Navy has gotten a lot smaller since we last saw it, and it seems that Papua has gotten frigates, which isn't good for the Sulu. So much for the technology advantage, this will be interesting. Missing Army Missing! One Songhai Army Responds to Conquerors of Libya Likes attacking rump states and long walks in the desert Last seen, Sahara Desert fighting the Moors. If found, please contact Askia of the Songhai. Reward, three gold per turn for two turns. It all comes crumbling down under. Shit has hit the fan for the Murray as their former allies of New Zealand have declared war on them. This is very bad indeed, as the Kiwi Navy is very strong and their capital is on the coast. And for some reason, their navy is exploring the southern tip of New Zealand and also trying to attack Melbourne, which won't end well. A war with nobody. The Evenks continued their siege of a strange patch of snow where screams are heard when they shoot at it with arrows. They're also trying to solve the mystery of where their boats disappear off to in the Arctic Sea. In other news, the Murray have finally made peace with Australia. A bit late, though. Baltic Battles. Prussia is surprisingly still holding their own against the Sami, even though they are basically inferior in every way except color scheme. They managed to flip Stettin back yet again and are currently ramming boats into Ramsa, which could possibly fall. They don't seem to be running out of units either, so they could still benefit from this war. Shikokuf Awakens. Shikoku has gotten sick of how bad Chin is at invading Canton, and have decided to invade them for it. And Chin don't exactly look ready for such an invasion, so they better use their high production to appear an army out of nowhere, or they will face the wrath of Shikoku. Creative Color Schemes Here in Eastern Africa, we see the nice Nubian carpet of almost outdated units, the Beta Israel carpet of Aga archers, and Benin's relatively small army, along with their we definitely didn't just find giant logs and lay them on their side and started calling them walls, wall improvements. I also never realized how these three sieves, along with Palmyra in the corner, share the same colors, brown and beige and light burgundy. It looks like a basic bitch's living room, and yet they still thought it was necessary to change the Vikings to red and yellow. Damn you, Blue Cassette. JK, we love you guys. It's weird. Lime's note, grumpy face, blame der Erlenkonig. Not even the islands are safe. New Zealand is apparently not going to stop at just invading mainland Murray, but also attack their one-tile islands using their freshly forged frigates. Full force of the Vikings. It seems that now with no distractions, the Vikings are throwing everything they have at Edinburgh, and things are not looking good for the Scots as there are seven boats outside their capital and final city and at least two dozen more in case those die. Maratha has declared war on the Chin, but it's unlikely they'll actually do anything, as they are quite far from superior China. Erasing even more cities. The Goths finally capture Bulgar and set it on fire. It will probably be flipped a few more times before it's completely gone, though. It seems that after this capture, the Goths don't seem to be advancing any more into the remains of the Golden Horde, but of course, I could be completely wrong. The Goths continue to raise cities that they capture, meaning that they suffer from some unhappiness, which I suppose is ironic because they are Goths after all. Capital Punishment 
The Kiwis are going straight for the grand prize of Kavanba, sending a few ships at it and beginning to scratch it a bit. When Sedan was interviewed about the war against the Murray, he said, Well, I mean, when they started attacking our lifelong friend of Australia, we had no choice but to avenge our greatest allies' losses. After checking the history books, this checks out. Firefighters with Bows the Golden Horde decided that maybe they should call the fire department in order to save Bulgar. So they gave them all some bows and a catapult for good measure and sent them on their way. It seems to have worked as Bulgar is no longer on fire. I wonder if anyone else has thought of this idea. Also, Zimbabwe have made peace with Nubia, ending a long and extremely memorable war which everyone knew was happening, right? <laughs> Salknam has sent a moderate navy of the highest quality boats they could find, but at least they brought an admiral. Surprisingly, no water walking units, though. We can also admire the Uruguay Corps, showing that this will be a hard nut to crack in the future, if it will ever get cracked. Endless Ocean in All Directions Now for a little break from all that action, we get a shot of some Madagascar scouts exploring the Antarctic Ocean, Probably looking for more places to teleport their units. Sanda can't go on for much longer. The Sulu are not looking too good right now as Papua send more boats and trebuchets at their cities, with Sanda Khan likely to fall soon and other cities possibly falling later if they don't start building units like right now. The Sulu do have galleons unlocked, but they only seem to have one which I'm pretty sure was just sunk a few tiles east of Baang. So, they should be able to defend properly if they actually tried. All island cities must belong to New Zealand. As expected, New Zealand have captured Minjereba, and the Murray will not be taking it back as their only nearby unit is an Inquisitor. Tonga time comes even closer as Tonga now have caravels. You all just wait. 911, please state your emergency. My city's on fire! Prussia has captured Ramsa and have set it on fire. The Sami have learnt from the Golden Horde and call the fire department and also give them bows. However, it doesn't seem to be working as Ramsa is still on fire after being shot so much. Maybe it's because there are two Sami melee units on the left side of the screen and 12 on the other. But maybe Manoa can take it. Come on Manoa, we believe in you. Shikoku, please defend your cities. Shikoku clearly didn't think this war through as they are not defending Macau very well, with just a single land unit in the form of a scout while the Chin are attacking with long swordsmen. If they manage to take the city, then that means they will share even more of a border with Canton, which will surely accelerate their eventual demise. Shikoku also have muskets now, and Canada is now medieval. Yay, Canada. High-tech units. Sandakan flips and I am very disappointed in the Sulu. They were supposed to be one of the most technologically advanced countries in the world, but they still have their trireme replacements and regular archers guarding their cities. Papua also apparently has privateers. Jirana, no! The Tomahawk warriors are advancing into the city of Chinende, having damaged it down to the yellow and probably going to capture it. The Apache lands seem to be very empty with only 15 military units on this slide. For comparison, Poverty Point have 17, which is very bad. The best color scheme. A Venkian, if that's what you call them, scientists are all very confused because of the disappearance of Varkuta only a few minutes after they managed to make it real again, but are convinced they can manage to make it reappear in the future. I've never realized how good the Nanette colors are. What sieve do you guys think have the best colors? Everyone gets an axe. It seems that now that the Iroquois have captured Chilworth, their massive army of lumberjacks have spread out across their empire. Or maybe they all went to the Apache front. Either way, their core is also looking quite empty. Maybe they should try to go for peace when they capture Chiende. Relevant war? In a war I had completely forgotten about, it seems that Australia are going to capture Songli, if all goes well while the Sulu are trying to get Dar instead of you know, defending their core from Papua. I mean, it's not like their core is that important. They can probably function without it. Just ask Canada how. Moving forward. Papua have flipped Sandakan yet again and their navy is coming ever closer to the Sulu core. 
Tongan spearmen and triremes are exploring New Guinea, very surprised that there are other civilizations in the game that aren't New Zealand, and immediately start planning how they will eventually take them down when the time comes, of course. Ottoman Dogpile The Ottomans missed the old days where they could just attack Chechia and no one really cared because nothing happened and wanted to relive them. At the same time, Venice realized that attacking the Czechs wasn't working as they had no coastal cities, so they made peace and declared on the Ottomans too. Turns out the Ottomans have a lot of coastal cities and Venice have a lot of boats, which means stonks for Venice. Prussia also DOW'd simply because they want to be friends with Venice or something. This is Coven Bad. New Zealand have expertly used their nice Renaissance era boats to attack one of the biggest cities in the cylinder, which I didn't think they would actually do. And the Murray were doing so well. I guess good things don't last forever. Prussia also makes peace with Korea and the Qing, which we all were waiting for. Intercontinental Sea War. The Haida declare a difficult war against Korea and their ridiculous amount of carracks. However, I believe in our new and improved Blackfoot replacements, sort of, as they seem to have the technological advantage. But they should probably have waited until they had more of a navy on this side of the world before attacking them. Ragnar rolling into Edinburgh. Prime your F keys as it seems that Scotland's time has run out. After a long and painful war, it seems Ragnar got his shit together and is one or two turns away from capturing his first capital, and Scotland seems powerless to stop it. The Chechend. The Chechende is now down and to the red and seems primed to fall next turn, but the real issue here is that Poverty Point still exists. Like, actually all of its neighbors could kill them, but instead just fight each other. So unproductive. Perhaps they are the Tibet of this mark throwing a pebble in their general direction. It seems that Isfahan has finally taken a tiny bit of damage, and maybe that could signify the beginning of the end of the Seljuks. We all know that that's not the important part of this slide, though. If you look over to the minimap, you might notice that... Kavanbaugh has fallen! This slide's called Multi-Million Massacre, but I didn't want to mess that flow up. That's right, folks, the Murray capital has been captured by the Kiwis in a surprisingly short amount of time, and it seems unlikely that it will flip back. Hopefully, no one was hoping for a Murray comeback, as that dream has been crushed along with some of the millions of people living in Kavanba. And as Minjin is also on the coast, New Zealand could also capture that city, which would be a final fuck you to their Australia coalition partner. However, the Civ Battle Royale isn't one with friendship. It's one with war. I'm just so excited to see all of you prediction people with your minus New Zealands and your crap that you were talking. New Zealand is coming back. Mistakes have been made. As Haiti builds the Himeji Castle, the Haida have begun to regret declaring war on Korea as their city of Talel is now under siege and Korea don't seem like they will be running out of boats to throw at that city anytime soon. Also, if you look at the minimap, you will see that the former Sulu city of Sentakan has been razed to the ground. Cutting everything down. Hiawatha finally captured Chitiende, and surprisingly, they don't set it on fire. Maybe he doesn't want Geronimo to call the firefighters, having heard stories from the Baltic Sea. I just noticed now that the Iroquois have crossbows. This is looking worse and worse for the Apache. Haiti, please. Here we see both the Haitian and Venezuelan cores showing that if Haiti truly committed, they might still be able to capture Caracas. They'd probably lose it immediately and then lose their capital, but it would still be worth it in the end, and it would be a pretty cool way to go out. Just one more burn. The Sulu realized they were screwed and made peace with Papua at the prize of Maimbang, which obviously was immediately set on fire due to the name. And this time, 911 can't help you as you don't have a war end. So now the Sulu need to rebuild as fast as possible before Tongu, Papua, or even Tonga think they look easily conquerable and wipe them out. Future Zimbabwean Lands And to end this very exciting part, we get a slide of Zimbabwe's future island colony, which they should really get on with conquering. Like... Actually, what are you doing, Zimbabwe? Benin isn't worth shit. Go for Madagascar. 
You thought it was over because I told you it was over. Nah. An interesting future war. From what seems to be a very different computer, we see the border between the Avenks and the Kamuks, and it is pretty clear that the, if they were to declare war, it would be one of the biggest battles so far on the cylinder. The Kamuks would finally become relevant and do something, which would be great for their two supporters. Hey, I'm a supporter. Racing for Greenland There are five different civilizations on Greenland, and out of all of these, the Métis have the strongest city on it. I would not be surprised if they were the ones that ended up with it when the HRE and the Manx are eliminated. That's right, I went there. Also, it seems that the Vikings did not capture Edinburgh this time, which is pretty disappointing. However, it is almost guaranteed that next part we will see the elimination of Robert the Bruce. Sorry, Burger. Upgrade your ships. We get a final shot of Southeast South America, where we can see that the Selknam are trying to cram cities anywhere they can in order to stand a chance against Uruguay when the time comes. But before that, they really need to get Carrix. They even have crossbows already, so it shouldn't take that long. We are illiterate. Now to end off the part, we get some stat slides where we can see that we are apparently stupid. But other than that, we aren't the worst at anything. In population, the Tonga are winning with over 81 million people crammed into those tiny islands. In food production, it's Uruguay. In production, it's Uruguay. In GNP, it's Uruguay. In soldiers, it's Uruguay with 350,000, which is quite a lot when the average is literally half of that. And in land, it's Uruguay. Just kidding, it's, it's the matey. They get that one. In approval, it is actually us. I guess the reason we are so happy is because we don't need to worry about fighting a planetary war to the death for all eternity or until we die. Some Warhammer 40k shit. And finally, Uruguay are also the smartest. All of this shows their dominance and superiority over the whole cylinder, which is definitely worrying. No cities in the Middle East? Now, with the religion map, we can see that Uruguay's religion has dominated their continent, and most of the Asian religions are doing pretty well, too. In Africa, Sunni Islam is dominant, having already outlasted its creator. In Oceania, it is a fierce battle between Chizkirpa and Bogomilism, with both religions being pretty small and fairly weak. Finally, North America has both Anga, I'm not going to try and pronounce that, and Orenda, the superior religion as its name, doesn't have like 200 letters. Uruguay are even the best at religion. Here we see that the biggest religion is Uruguay's. Of course it is. With 689 pop converted and it being practiced in 50 different cities. And most of the other religions not being too bad either except for Amanaism, Nubia's religion which I guess was inspired by Mark II's party pope, as he also had a religion that only spread to like two cities. More religions. Finally, we get the rest of the religions which show that the Seljuk religion is actually better than Uruguay's. Now, if only their actual religion was that big. This has been user Yago2003. Please don't shit too hard on this narration as it is my first time doing so. Hope you enjoyed this part and just as a warning for anyone who wants to narrate, I signed up for this in March 2018. Have a good day, everyone. And it's me, Dawkins, again. How are you guys? I uh, appreciate you being here. Appreciate you listening. If you did enjoy this, please like. If you haven't already, please subscribe by clicking the subscribe button, which is somewhere on my page. Or you can click that little ball version of me. Uh, it's been a fantastic ride. I really am excited about this part because Papua burning stuff down, New Zealand, Oceania is just great. We've always been at war with Oceania. Anyway, it's been awesome. And for episode 16, we'll see you next time.